Breaking overnight in our Sunrise Smart Star, two people shot, another injured on North Clinton Avenue. Police tell us this happened just after 2 this morning on North Clinton. Two victims were shot, a 52-year-old woman and a 30-year-old woman. Both are expected to survive their injuries. The third victim, a 23-year-old man, was on scene during the incident but was not shot. He is also expected to survive. Police tell us they believe a verbal altercation led up to the shooting. We're following another shooting overnight. A 17-year-old woman was shot on Clifford Avenue. Police responded just after 1 a.m. The victim is expected to survive, and we're told no suspects are in custody for either of these shootings. Also breaking overnight, Rochester, Monroe County sheriffs are asking for your help in locating a missing 17-year-old. Benjamin White was last seen in Penfield. We're told he got in a dark sedan and left the location. He is 5 foot 10 and weighs 185 pounds. He has black hair and brown eyes and was last seen wearing a red sweatshirt and black ripped jeans. If you have any information, you should call 911. We are following multiple stolen car incidents involving teens in the city yesterday. Police tell us around 8 last night, several teens stole a vehicle on Clifford Avenue. Then while investigating, OnStar contacted police with the vehicle's location. Four teens, a 15-year-old girl, two 15-year-old boys, and a 14-year-old boy were all taken into custody after a chase. There were no injuries reported. Two teens have been arrested following a crash in a stolen Kia. This happened just before 4 yesterday, closing portions of Elmwood Avenue in both directions for a time. Police say they are still looking for a third suspect. They add the vehicle was used in a robbery earlier the same day, about two hours before the crash. Police tell us the suspect struck a 70-year-old man and stole a 69-year-old woman's purse on Broadway Street in the city. One was caught quite literally in my backyard. The other one jumped the fence into my neighbor's property. Overall, I feel squeamish. My car's parked on the side of the road. I see have cops taking pictures of my house. It was as a crime scene. So it's just very squeamish. Police say the two suspects that were apprehended were 13 and 14 years old. In Cattaraugus County, a child and teen were killed following a head-on crash in the town of Freedom Saturday afternoon. The drivers of the colliding vehicles, brother and sister. According to investigators, it happened just after noon on Saturday. The crash occurred between 21-year-old Evan Klink and 24-year-old Dahlia Klink. Investigators say the two other passengers with Dahlia, 6-year-old Molly Kibler and 17-year-old Havana Lopez, were pronounced dead at the scene. According to deputies, Evan Klink crossed the line on purpose before losing control of the car. He was evaluated by drug recognition experts and taken to state police Warsaw for further evaluation. No one has been charged for the crash, but troopers say it is still very early in their investigation. The body of a suspected drowning victim has been recovered at Durand Eastman Beach. The Rochester Police Department's scuba team was on scene, assisted by Monroe County sheriffs and state police. According to investigators, the person went missing at the beach between 2.30 and 3.30 Saturday afternoon. The victim has not been identified. News 8 is your local election headquarters. New York State kicked off its early voting cycle yesterday. There are 13 sites in Monroe County offering early voting. Several sites also offer ASL services. Board of Elections leaders tell us this session is well staffed with inspectors and support. The first step, though, ensuring you have a primary. Checking in on your voter status is a convenient way to make sure your vote is counted. I'm a firm believer in as much access as possible um, so that voters have choice. Um, and so this is an opportunity so that, you know, if your schedule is pretty hectic, like many of us um, have, um, you have nine days, um, a variety of different times and locations for people to choose from so that there really are no excuses for you to come out and participate and exercise your right to vote. Early voting is great because you can go to any location um, and we will find the correct ballot for where you live. So even if you live way out in Sweden, for you know, for example, that's the farthest and you work in the county office building you can come in here and vote early voting runs through next Sunday the 25th and the primary election date is Tuesday June 27th where polls are open from 6 a.m. until 9 p.m. 
Well, nothing says Pride Month quite like a drag brunch, and the Legacy community is celebrating in style. The community center decked out in rainbows galore as residents got their groove on with talented drag performers. There was bingo, food, and even Pride Month history classes. This is the first drag brunch event at the Legacy Community Center. A stepping stone organizers hope will leave an impact on the older people in our region. So, I think it's important to show the this generation, the senior citizens, um, that we are a welcoming community. Visibility is important for our residents. Seeing something like this, opening their horizons up, it gives them more of an understanding, and then they will be more accepting of people that they meet that are LGBTQ. The Legacy Community is also certified by SAGE, a national organization teaching how to care for seniors in the LGBTQ plus community. Well, Dawson Knox finding himself in the 585 for his second annual youth football camp over the weekend. The Bills tight end got hurt in minicamp earlier last week and didn't practice Wednesday. Knox says he's in good health and the injury is minor. The camp held at Nazareth University was offered to boys and girls and Knox says this was a humbling experience for him. The younger you are, the more, you know, influenced you are by other things. So the better role models you have, the better influence you have on your life, odds are you're going to grow up and lead a, you know, more balanced, more healthy lifestyle. So I think if, you know, I can teach them a couple things today, whether it's running routes or whether it's doing their homework on time, you know, I think it's, it's really important, especially at this age, to, you know, to get a good word in their ear. And former Bills wide receiver Stevie Johnson making a stop in Rochester Friday night. Johnson signed autographs and took pictures with locals at the sports memorabilia store Game On. The former star receiver explains why he decided to come back to Western New York and meet with his supporters. We all about community engagement. My passion is in the community and youth. And uh, Game On has always been about the community and the youth. The youth coming in here, we had some kids today uh, that had their own businesses, the car businesses. We got everything from video game systems, uh, cards, uh, pictures. We got uh, memorabilia, every, everything you need. And we got the best deals, basically, um, because what, what, what's your price? You name it, and we'll, and we'll, we'll work with you. Well, today we celebrate Juneteenth. The federal holiday celebrates the freedom of former slaves following the Emancipation Proclamation on June 19th in 1865. The celebration started early, though, as ERACE, known as Eliminating Racism and Seeking Equality, held its fourth annual Juneteenth Festival in Irondequoit Saturday. Organizers of the festival say, though the day is filled with fun, it is important to educate everyone on the holiday's history. It's been celebrated since 1865, largely in the black community. So to share this with everyone really is an act of inclusion that brings me immense joy and an opportunity to not just celebrate, but educate. And don't worry if you missed out, there are still a lot of celebrations going on today. The town of Sodus Historical Society is holding a dedication ceremony to unveil a new historical marker in the Hamlet of Joy. The Rochester Museum and Science Center is celebrating with activities, food, drink, and live music. Plus, the annual Rock Juneteenth 5K will be at 1 o'clock. That features a jazz concert after the race in Genesee Valley Park. For a full list of activities, you can also head to our website, rochesterfirst.com, and look under the community tab. James is back with us and it is a perfect weather day for yeah. all of those outdoor activities. Right, yeah, going on a 5K sounds great for yeah. you today. Uh, Humidity is not too bad, mm -hmm. so we'll take the heat. Uh, numbers in the 70s, that's right around average. In fact, we'll still be a degree or two below with a high of uh, average 79. I get to 76, 77 later today. Clouds bump up just a little bit. Uh, and then uh, your eight-day forecast looking pretty good. A day-to-day -day warming. Tomorrow, bring the sun on. Uh, 70s, likely 80s by the middle of the week, Katrina. I don't think too many people are going to complain about no. that forecast for sure.